Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. Don't mind my shirt. I just took a shower. I don't feel like switching shirts. Uh, but today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my overall thoughts on Heist League. It's been out for almost three weeks. And to me, unfortunately, I really feel like Heist is very comparable to uh, Harvest, which was the previous league where it's a great foundation, but it was executed really poorly with the essentially abundance of complicated stuff and just clunkiness involved with it. Uh, and in Harvest League, it was about the horticulture stations and the way you store your crafts and the efficiency of trying to set everything up. And in Heist League, it's about the really the little things that occur every single time you heist. So before I jump into a heist to kind of just show a little bit about what it is for the people who don't know, I want to go ahead and start with an example of what I'm talking about uh, with the bugs. So here's a clip from today's stream. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and play this. Don't mind the PoE music. Sorry if you're going to hear double. Okay, I really hope I didn't just fuck up by doing this because I don't feel like backtracking, but here we go. Oh no, there's... So the concept of what I just did, for people who don't know, is uh, once you're at max alert and you click your last chest, like right before your alert level goes like this, you're going to have a countdown timer until you reach the end. 20 seconds to go from here to here is not really a problem. I mean, I could pretty much jump through the whole instance in 20 seconds. But the problem occurs when you're trying to open a door. Uh, usually it's not a problem, but when bugs are involved, as you'll see here, it can be really annoying. Two doors, and she's bugged. So what I did here, I, yeah. you can see this little icon in the bottom left. You can use the hotkey V for shortcut, which will bring the NPC and force it to interact with the door. Unfortunately, it did not interact. So second time, you can tell I clicked it because it's gone. Sure? She did not move from her position, which and is up here. So you go off the screen to reset her. Now she's over here. And Click V. Again. She still doesn't do anything. Okay. Yeah. Click again. I'm just Nothing. What's the point? And it really sucks because when you're doing stuff like this, the only way to really surefire prevent them from bugging is you have to go through the whole instance, open all the doors. Then you could technically backtrack and open up the chest because... I mean, even if I had two minutes at lockdown, if she doesn't open the door, there's literally nothing I can do to get past it, which means I can't get the XP for her at the end, and I can't get the markers back. It's not like a game-breaking bug, it's just something I encounter f very, very frequently, which makes it really, really annoying to, to do it, because a lot of Path of Exile mechanics, unfortunately, you have to do them hundreds of times, which is okay if they're fun, but when you encounter this little bug every five heists, and, you know, you're running so many a day, it can just be kind of annoying. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump on in and just do a quick heist to show you guys how I pretty much do it. Thank you for letting me I must have time okay, so we got jewelry, jewelry, jewelry. That's pretty good because we are going for uh, Essence Worm. So jewelry has a good chance at, well, not a good chance, but a, a chance at Uniques. Oh, she's bugged again. Nanette, why? Together, success. Okay, so now to reset this, I go over here and then go back. Okay, there we go. Oh my. Okay. Like, this is fine. When she's trying to interact and she gets attacked, that's totally fine, right? That's just, you know, not clearing fast enough. Nope, already. Come on, Annette. Just do your job. Do okay. She's bugged. Success. Open your mind. No further. My will is their command. Hmm. 
Okay. That was good. See, that's how she's supposed to work, is when you click V, she immediately starts it. Okay, so then in this case, just the min-max, you could technically just come over here. Let's see. Let me just throw a smoke mine over there. Tap this, tap that, detonate back. I think I can actually just... There we go. Cool. I'm not sure what this weird lag is from. Okay, so overall, I mean, the concept of heisting is pretty fun. It's it's not too bad. It's just when everything is kind of clunky, it doesn't feel as good. It's really rewarding for SSF. It's fun that there's a bunch of different types of heists in your heist locker. Um, that's pretty cool. It's weird that Bunker has like 10 times the density of others. I'm not really sure what's up with that. It's also weird that Mansion is way more rare than the others. I also don't understand that. This is reminding me of Metamorph 2.0 with eyes all over again. Uh, the, the Grand Heists are super fun. My concern with Grand Heists is that the way it works is you put in a Grand... I guess I should have done a Grand Heist instead, but you basically put in a Grand Heist, right? From the Grand Heist... Hi, Minnie. Can you want to jump up here? Good boy. From the Grand Heist, you'll essentially pick your guys that you want, set up the uh, the Grand Heist. So let's use an example here. We're going to take this over to Wakano. In any case, stop, please. Put this in. And then here we can actually see. So in this instance, I would use Gianna because she's got the 40% discount. Don't click this because this will reveal everything. So then we'll open this and then we can see this is a really cool mechanic. I think it's really nice. So I'm going to unlock Blight, but I'm going to use a regular guy because this is a minor one. And then I can open that as well. Then you can go over here. I don't know if, it, if it's in the planning room when it's over there. Okay, cool. It is. And then from here, you can set up who you want and then you sign it off and you go do the grand heist. But what sucks is... The way the mechanic works, unfortunately, is a lot of people are still crashing in heists. So you essentially have the escape room, right? You go through, you collect all your loot, you go through here, you go to the display room, which is fantastic. There's really cool rewards, depending on what the heist is. You pop it, and then you crash. And because you crash because of the game, you lose all the rewards from here. You can still do the second wing, but... The concept of losing your rewards on death is a cool concept, but unfortunately with Path of Exile's state of the game, it's just not ready for a mechanic like that. And it, it just really sucks because the worst thing about Path of Exile is having your, your stuff rolled back. It's like the worst feeling in the world you can ever experience because drop rates in this game are so rare that when you finally find something and you crash and lose it, it's like, wow. It's, it's just really, mm, I wish there was another way they could integrate it, right? So next up, I want to talk about the uh, the gear rolling. This is this is where I think it gets a little bit weird. So I really like this system. I like that each person has their own equipment. It's pretty simplified with how it works. You know, um, the melee weapons roll melee related auras, sort of, or I think sort of, not really, but I, I think it's like red related skills. The ranged weapons can roll green related auras, and then I think the the blue one rolls. Uh, basically caster auras or blue auras as an example the part that confuses me about the system is how each class has multiple roles and the thing is is with the multiple roles this is where it gets confusing because 
you're crafting their gear for a specific purpose, but they have multiple roles. So what type of gear are you crafting for them? And this is like, this is a personal opinion. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me. And there's, you know, discussion is important in Path of Exile. I really do feel like it, right? Nothing can be one-sided. Everything should be open for discussion. So I spoke to Yoji about this and Yoji said, well, I kind of like the fact that there's, you know, complexity within the gear. And I like the complexity of the gear. I just get confused with the subclasses sort of that they have. I wish classes were more focused on simply having one specific type so that it would be a lot easier to gear them rather than having multiple setups. I mean, I understand the way it works. I just feel it would be a lot more straightforward and a lot easier. Um, the other thing that's confusing is the plus one level, I don't understand what it does. So like as an example, this person is trap disarmament. It says trap disarmament requires level two. My trap disarmament is maxed at level two. So I assumed this would give maybe plus one level to trap disarmament, but it doesn't. So when you try to do a level three trap disarmament, you can't because this doesn't count. So it, that leads me to believe this only affects the NPC's actual level inside the heist, which I don't even know what that does unless that's about being combat oriented, which makes no sense because the only combat oriented guy is Huck. And that's really about it, is a powerful combatant and provides strong buffs to allies. Um, so that's where it gets a little confusing. And then the next part, in my opinion, that really should be explained to the community is whether or not the item rarity and item quantity... Okay, can you... What are you doing, buddy? The item rarity and item quantity on your accessory, does that only work for items dropped off of the mobs in Heist? Or does that also work for the chests in Heist? Because I believe, and I could very well be wrong on this, for players... Item quantity and item rarity has no effect on chests, but rolling the map has an effect on the chests. But then when you take Blight as an example, Blight doesn't care about the map mods because of the way its chests work. And when people are investing currency into this stuff, I just feel like it would it would just make a lot more sense to be straightforward about what affects what. I don't really see the point of like the whole hidden mechanic, but maybe some people like that. And I guess that's okay. It's just really confusing to me because when you're running heists, you know, hundreds of heists over and over, you don't have to have the most efficient setup, but you want to make sure your setup is actually working for you, right? Like that makes sense because otherwise you're 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 basically just testing something for the game and you don't know, right? Because like, as an example, I was told quantity is really good and it, it makes sense, right? Because if quantity is a multiplier to everything, quantity is just a better version of duplicate if you have no quantity because it's quantity on everything. And then you have the chance at duplicate, which makes a lot of sense, but it's just really confusing, right? Um, so anyway, that's pretty much it. Overall, you know, I know I sound really negative. I am really happy with heist. I have done a lot of heisting. Um, I've done hundreds of them. I have opened over a thousand stack decks. Uh, I've got a nice, beautiful replica tab, which doesn't actually have any of my replicas for some reason. But I really like the idea of the um, the new support gems, or not the new, but the um, alternate quality. It's really interesting. It's really cool to find upgrades in SSF or potential build options with that. I really like the replica uniques. They're pretty solid as well. Like I got a replica Feral's Fur, which is just super cool, super build enabling for a lot of different stuff. I really like all of it. It's just I feel it could have been implemented in, a, in an easier way so more people are encouraged to interact with it. Now, a lot of people are going to ask about the rewards. Personally, I think the rewards are fantastic, but I'm also not the guy who's farming tier 16 plus tier sexton, so tier 19 maps with, you know, delirium and etc. I personally don't think that the league mechanic should ever, ever be more rewarding than pure endgame Path of Exile grinding. Because if they do that, it's going to make such a weird imbalance with everyone now wanting to do the league mechanic, which means everyone needs to research and learn to min-max the league mechanic, and then all of a sudden players are getting burnt out because they have to relearn so much stuff every single league. I think that the league mechanic should always be semi-rewarding, and of course the first couple of people in each league to figure out the more efficient methods should be able to, you know, generate a large amount of currency, like the first people who kill the bosses and get the new uniques, etc. And then overall, you know, in the end, people realize, oh, it's actually easy. This unique is not worth something. But because you were like, you know, a couple, a couple of the fees, couple, sorry, the first couple of people to figure it out, you know, you should be rewarded for being able to set the price on that unique. So overall, like I said, pretty happy. I'm curious at what you guys think about it. I'm pretty sad that it's still really buggy even three weeks into the league. That's really off-putting to me. I just really don't like that. Um, but anyway, overall, I'm pretty happy for it. So 
If you guys like the if you guys like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day on twitch.tv slash pox, except for Sundays. And you can thank Mr. Mini K here for all of the stuttering as he is trying to crawl down my leg. Um, Mr. Mini K, isn't that right, Mr. Sir? Yep. You're always so sleepy, aren't you, buddy? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. All right. Have a wonderful time, everybody.